man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hope you guys are doing great. Seeing some awesome people already in the chat. You guys are awesome. I love seeing your your hearts and your ways at work, praying for each other, lifting each other up. I see also Dennis and Debbie, also known as Shire Yon. I don't know how to say. I still don't know how to say the name in the uh, in the chat. I want to say thank you for the book. I brought it so I could say thanks personally. Got to meet them in person at our last gathering, along with. Carl Fletcher, who's also in the chat somewhere. I saw him earlier. So uh, blessed to be here. I thank you guys for joining in. This is awesome to have an opportunity to talk about the Word with you guys. I am by no means a Bible scholar or a Bible expert. You can ask my wife, who knows far more than I do. I am just seeing some connections, and I've shared them before. And thankfully, uh, one of you pointed out some mistakes that we made and that allows me to take that work down before people start freaking out when they're reading the Bible and saying, okay, there's another Mandela effect. I'm pretty sure that Josh said that the uh, verse here said this, but now it doesn't. It's changed. <laughs> I don't want that kind of confusion to happen because I have come across videos from the past that we grew up watching where they are saying things like the lion shall lie down with the lamb. And we read it now and it doesn't say that. It doesn't mean that the word changed. It just means that we were fed the wrong lines growing up, and it stuck into our heads because we saw it on TV. So um, I'm going to get started really soon, actually right now. But before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out and a thank you to our patrons. You guys are awesome, and we couldn't do a lot of the things we do without you. It's not something we beg for, but it's a blessing, especially if you've ever sat in this office in the, in the hot summer. There's no AC, and that's one thing we're going to have to do. And so uh, we wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for you guys running a, a, a separate AC unit all the way up here. So uh, definitely a blessing. It's good to have this space and finally the Internet to go live with you guys. So uh, thank you to our patrons. And for those of you who are patrons and you may not have received the memo, every other Saturday or Sabbath we have a hangout. And so the next one will be this Saturday and next Saturday or not, not the next Saturday, this Saturday, the 14th, and then two Saturdays away on the 28th. So um, definitely going to be a lot of fun. We've had fun already. I think we've had three of them with the second one kind of not working out so well, but the third one went great, had almost two hours or maybe more than two hours of just awesome fellowship and uh, discussed some really cool things. So uh, hope seeing if Tony was in the chat, he's one of the ones, one of the loyals that shows up um, from Canada. He's always there. So good to see you guys. Yeah, Will, Will Brack saying, what's up? What's up, brother? Good to see you here. Um, I had planned on making this video or doing this video off air, but something something just was telling me to do it live because I feel like I, I, I spend way too much time editing videos and finding out afterwards I've made a mistake and you guys catch it after we've uploaded it. So feel free to jump in, add some connections to the word that you've seen or things that come into your mind while you're watching this. Because that's how that's where some of these came from, you guys adding in some of your wisdom. So uh, definitely appreciate all that you guys do in terms of putting us in check, <laughs> making sure we are doing the right things. Can you guys hear me before I get started? I want to make sure we have good audio and everything is is great because I'm assuming I'm using this mic, but sometimes it may mess up and I might be using my computer mic. Things might be making weird noises. Is everything good before we get started? I hope so. I'm not seeing anything. I know there's a little bit of a delay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Dennis and Debbie. Appreciate it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know people will be joining in as we go. Thank you, Joshua Matthew, um, with these connections that we have been seeing. 
and that the father's been revealing. And some of these may just be things that I'm, I'm connecting that really aren't connected, but the connections, if you didn't see our first video that we removed was um, called interconnected word. I believe it um, was called interconnected word, the Messiah, Elijah and Moses connections. And this was something that my wife brought to my attention initially. And it sort of just snowballed from there. And the connections are deep. I mean, it's, the whole word, I used to look at it as like a bunch of different little stories. And the more you read it, the more you see how interconnected it is. And not only that, we are part of it. We're part of the prophecies that are unfolding. The same types of things that happened in the word are happening now. And I believe that's why so many people are being drawn back to the word. Starting over, looking back at Genesis, even checking out some of the books, the lost books or the Apocrypha, things like that. So lots of really, really awesome discoveries being made in the Word, or not really rediscoveries. These things have already been discovered. So um, we are going to have a lot of fun doing this. And again, I'll be looking at the chat to see if there's any connections that you guys have that I have yet to see, because the ones I in this video are extra. Uh, we've added on several com compared to the original. So I'll go ahead and see why is it not letting me change slides. There it goes. All right, so the very first connection I want to look at is the Messiah coming out of Egypt because a lot of times, like I never really, I guess reading the word originally, I never looked at him as coming out of Egypt. I, you know, you kind of uh, make that connection with Moses. But the Messiah spent the early part of his life, I'm not sure how long exactly, in Egypt, hiding because they were killing newborns. Very similar to Moses, or actually identical to Moses, and it lines up with that prophecy where it says, when in Israel was a child, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. That's quoted in the New Testament as well. And so you have them hiding at the very first parts of their lives because they were killing newborns. And in my original video, I said firstborns. And so that's why I took that down. I know it might seem like a small mistake, where I copied and pasted the wrong word or whatever and just kind of read it out of excitement. But uh, it's important that we get things right with the word, extremely important. And so I'm going to do my best to cut out any mistakes we make. If I make some on here, cut them out as opposed to removing the entire video. So if you're coming back later and watching and something's missing, it's probably why. <laughs> but the um, connections you see here with them being called out of Egypt, I believe is a really big deal. And when I was going back, this is from yesterday. I was actually looking at this yesterday where it says the parents of Moses, they hid him for three months. And then, you, of course, they made this little ark here and put him in the water. And he was drawn out of the water. And Mary, in the book of Luke, was at the mother of John the Baptist's house for three months, it says, uh, before they left their house. So they were there for around, it says, about three months. Probably not a connection there. There might be. I don't know. You guys um, will probably see something I didn't, but I just saw that yesterday and thought, hmm, I might add that to the to the list of connections. And then you literally have them leaving Egypt with the purpose of setting people free. For Moses, it was the second time he left Egypt. For the Messiah, it was his his very first time. And you even see the verses here. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And then we have the women at the well, or in the Messiah's case, the woman at the well. And this takes us back to, <laughs> I get like sidetracked on things. I'll be looking at one connection and then I'll, I'll see something else. But um, this brings us to Jacob's well, where the Messiah was sitting on this well. It says, um, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour that cometh, there cometh a woman of Samaria drawing water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. And so that was the Messiah sitting on Jacob's well. And, of course, you have um, Moses doing the exact same thing, going to a well to draw water. And the daughters of the priest of Midian, they show up, and these bad shepherds, bad shepherds also show up and try to, I guess, scare them away. And that's where Moses goes in, being the 
the good shepherd and getting rid of those guys, taking care of business and watering the flocks of the daughters of the priest of Midian. And he ends up marrying one of the daughters. So that was there, that connection there. But the well that belonged to Jacob, it was Jacob's well. I wanted to go back and look at that story and see uh, what connections there was there, because that was interesting to me that it was Jacob's well. And the very first encounter I saw when going back and reading that story about Jacob was that it says here, and he looked and behold, a well in the field and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it for out of that well, they watered the flocks and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. <laughs> so you have the Messiah sitting on the well's mouth. And then the original time it was discovered by Jacob, there was a giant stone on the well's mouth where they watered those three flocks of sheep. There's always significance with the threes, as we're finding as you go through the word, the three days and all of that. It gets deeper and deeper because it reminds me of the Psalm 118 verse where it says, The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. And that the reason that comes to mind is because the Messiah himself says, um, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So that little connection there brings up some more things. I'll get to that. Let me see what this bottom one says, because they kind of keep vanishing here. And um, therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I lay... In Zion, for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to zoom in because I can't see the, the font here. Um, the stone. There it is. Here's that verse right there in Matthew that I was quoting. And when he was talking in, to the Pharisees, he was actually talking and the Pharisees were listening. When he finished that quote, he says, um, therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And so the Pharisees got really angry. They realized, OK, we think he's talking about us. And so they wanted to do things then. But of course, the multitudes uh, prevented them, scared them away, I am sure. And this brings me back to Psalms yet again, where you're reading. I'm going to read more of this here, where it says the very rock that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And this was this was from the CJB. You guys are usually asking me, what version is that? For some reason, I went to the, I go back and forth between a lot of different versions to compare things. And this was just the one I ended up at at this particular time. And um, so it may be different in the version you have, but this is Psalm 118, 22 through 29, um, where it says the very rock that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And this has become this has come from Adonai. And in our eyes, it is amazing. This is the day Adonai has made a day for us to rejoice and be glad. Please, Adonai, save us. Please, Adonai, rescue us. And it says blessed is he who comes in the name of Adonai. That's significant. We're going to see that in just a second and how it compares to this last verse here where it says, we bless you from the house of Adonai. Adonai is God and he gives us light. Join in the pilgrim festival with branches. And this is different. It doesn't say that in the King James version that I read. So I didn't catch that right away that there was a difference. And so when I was comparing this, it reminded me of the time that he is riding through the through the crowds on the donkey and it says or the colt and it says others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road and the crowds ahead of him and behind shouted please deliver us to the son of david blessed is he who comes in the name of adonai so you can see i've, I've color coded this so you can see the connections a little easier um but you look back over here, and it's almost the exact same thing in Psalms. So I want to I want to figure out. I haven't really had a, a good chance to figure out why it is that the the CJB talks about the branches, and the other one, I think the King James version, uh, words it a little differently and talks about cords, maybe even like a sacrifice. I'll have to go back and look. 
some of this stuff is brand new. I've just added it to the slides like last night around midnight. <laughs> so that's probably why I look like I'm a little sleep deprived. Um, that's definitely why. So um, this is now Matthew 21. Let me see. Okay, I've already read that one. Now, this one I think is important because it comes, it goes down to a warning that the Messiah gave because it says, blessed is he who came in the name of Adonai. And before, when they, you know, before he left, he said, I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Always kind of reminds me of like the son of perdition type of scenario. Not really sure exactly what he was talking about, but maybe we'll find out extremely soon. All right. Somehow my slides are out of order. I'm not sure what's going on here. Sorry about that. All right. So back to these connections. We've now got the Messiah quoting Moses. So you see that connection. They both say in the same things. Why? Because he was extremely familiar with the scriptures. He knew them, knew them by heart. He could quote them, teach them. And soon, it's going to be on all of our hearts like that when we re have the resurrection. Now, their purpose. This is where Elijah comes into the mix. All three of them had a purpose. That purpose was to bring people away from these false gods, bring them closer to the Father, have them turn back to Him with all their heart, all their soul. And that was their the essence of their purpose, their missions. And that is what... Moses bringing them out of Egypt, we're seeing a lot of that false god worship resurface, those Babylonian false teachings uh, mixing in with all sorts of different religions, even Christianity is not exempt. They all had 40 days without food. Some of these I'll go really fast. You may have to stop, take screenshots later or whatever, um, but they all went 40 days without food, and that 40-day number is significant. Even when you look at the journey through the wilderness, it was 40 years, not exactly 40 days, but 40 years. And you have 40 days and 40 nights with the flood, with the rain. And all of these times you look through the word, I'm not going to read all of these for the sake of the hundreds of connections we could go, go through here. But the um, 40 days and 40 nights was significant, including the time when Moses went to the mountain the Mount of God, where it says, when I was gone up, I'm going to read the one in Deuteronomy first here. When I was gone up into the Mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant, which the Lord made with you. Then I abode in the Mount 40 days and 40 nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. And so we go skip forward to first Kings here with Elijah. It says, and he arose and did eat and drink and went into the mount or and went in the strength of his of the of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And I thought, Horeb, is this a different mountain? You know, like I said, I'm not a Bible scholar. Um, so I was like, is there another mountain of God? What's going on here? And I have to go back and look at things and see where have I seen that word before? And when you go back to Psalms, and they're talking about this, and they even talk about this, I believe, in Exodus, it says, They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped a metal image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. And so Horeb was at the base of the Mount of God. So it was the exact same mountain, but they were just wording it to where they were showing you where he went. He went unto Horeb, and then I'm assuming you're going to have to go up the mountain and that is where Mount Sinai is. And that mountain, people that have pinpointed that location, you can kind of see it in the background here, is actually dark on top. And it's dark on top for a reason. It's the same reason that there is melted sand. If you go to the shoreline where the Red Sea crossing happened, the entire shoreline where the waters were parted is melted sand, and you have stones infused in it, and it's because of that pillar of fire. Now, when he was on the mountain, you will hear of fire when you go back and read those accounts. And so that's probably why the, that's the only mountain in the area where the top of it is like charred. It's black. And so really cool there. The Father's presence up there. Both of these men, 40 days and 40 nights, just like the Messiah. It's all interconnected. It's all important. And it says here, I'm going to read the, the bottom verses here. And the Lord came down 
upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And then with First Kings, it says, And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountain. That would be awesome. But it's about to get a little more awesome <laughs> when we see some of the connections. But even the Messiah, this is different. This is where the Messiah's story and his chapter is different. Wasn't that pleasant. He was tempted in every way, it says, and tempted in a way that many people would have just taken the world. Because if you've ever gone a few days fasting, I think I maxed out at about three it is tough. It's tough to fast. It's tough to do without, deny your flesh and do that. I could not imagine uh, being mentally tough enough to go 40 days without food and water. My goodness, you would have to be extremely dedicated before that and healthy. I'm sure their foods were, the nutrient density in their foods was a lot different back then, but that's not making excuses for them. That's tough no matter what you're eating or what your diet plan is. Um, anything over a few days, is that's just crazy. I mean, I would say crazy. That's just powerful. <laughs> You're a powerful person. Um, but with the Messiah, I'm going to read this. It says, And the devil taking him up into an high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment time, because the world is, there's no curvature. They weren't accounting for that. <laughs> and the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomever I will give it. So he knows what, you know, the things of this world, the worldly things, he can he can offer that to people, deceive them, make it think it's going to just be the end all, that that void will be filled. And so people make these really sad deals and gain the world, and it is not good. You do not want to lose the world. Those are the most unhappy, miserable looking people I've ever seen. Okay. So he says, if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And knowing, you have to think, knowing what his purpose is, the Messiah, what's going to happen. You can you can go and do this for the people and suffer this awful, horrible end. And then, or you can have the world. And he was already in a state where he'd been 40 days and 40 nights without food. Yet he said, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. So the word... He lived by it. He's our example. So when you're tempted like that, remember that. You can have the world, but it's better to lose the world to gain what that world cannot take away. Now, here is another really cool connection, the miracle of replenishing food. And then you have this connection here with the raising from the dead. You have the widow son raising from the dead with Elijah, Lazarus raising from the dead with Yeshua, and then ooh, I can use my arrow keys. Just found a life hack on accident. Um, and so that was one really good one. And then the smiting or they smote the waters. You know, it says here with, with Elijah, he smote the waters and they were divided. A lot of times we look at Moses as being the one where the dividing of the water happened. But it happened with the Ark of the Covenant, which we'll see in a second, uh, at the River Jordan. And also at the River Jordan is where... They smote the waters where Elijah did, and they divided. And then he passed on a double portion of his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to Elisha. It's hard to say those two names and not get them mixed up. To Elisha after he was taken up, or yeah, I guess after he was taken up by a whirlwind. And then the Messiah, or I guess Elijah, before I skip to the Messiah, Elijah also smote the waters and divided them. So it was another time, time number three. And that was the same place, the baptism of the Messiah also took place. So another connection there, but you have the calming of the storm or the calming of the seas and the Messiah actually walking on them instead of parting them, just directly walking on them. And of course, Moses being the most famous example or the most well-known example of the seas parting where there are literally chariot wheels still there. And if that's not enough evidence, like I said earlier, the shoreline has melted sand throughout it. So you can look around. They don't make blowtorches that big um, th to do that. And I don't see why anybody would want to fake that evidence and how they could even fake it if they were faking it, melting that much sand. It would take a extremely powerful, above 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit to melt the sand. 
And so doing that evenly all over would take something that I have yet to see, a technology I've never seen, or it would take the word being fulfilled just like we have been seeing it with the connections we're making and the proofs that we're seeing. So really cool there with the parting of water. And like I said earlier, there was the very first time in Joshua, or not the very first time, first you had, of course, Moses, but um, Joshua, when they carried the Ark of the Covenant over, and then Elijah, and then again with Elisha, not to get confused, their names sound very familiar. I knew some twins named Elijah and Elisha, and that was the most confusing twin encounter I've had with names. <laughs> so there's the uh, Ark of the Covenant crossing the water. That's really cool that it did that. All right. Also, like I said just a, a minute ago, that was the location of the baptism where John the Baptist, and you know a lot of people, um, there's some, some debate here, was the one coming in the spirit of Elijah? Was it him or the Messiah? That's, that's debatable. Uh, most people believe it was John the Baptist. My wife has seen some things that are really cool um, and having that relate to the Messiah as well with his purpose and the things that he did. And as you're seeing all of these connections being made, she did a video about that. That's literally her only video on this channel, aside from the inspirations she gives me with our Bible studies. But uh, that was where John the Baptist was when he was baptizing the River Jordan. So think about that. Elijah parting the River Jordan before he left, and then John the Baptist coming, and that was where he was with the Messiah when he was being baptized. And of course, the Father speaks one of the only two times he speaks throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So, bam, really cool in there. And just the names of the people and the meanings of these names. I mean, it just, there's some beautiful things. I covered these in our last video that we took down. Um, our father is good. Our father, Yahuwah, is God. Yahuwah is salvation. That was with Elijah and Elisha, the first two to part the water there. And then you have John and Yeshua, where similar Almost exactly like you're copying and pasting. Yahuwah is gracious. Yahuwah is salvation. Names are significant. <clears throat> now, these three all being at the transfiguration, that's one of the things that sparked my interest. Like, why these three? Why not other people? What what is what is significant? And it goes deeper than what we're showing here. I'm just showing you guys connections. You guys will take this and run with it. But they were all three at the transfiguration. And this is something I, I, can't, I think it was one of you guys pointed out or my wife. I can't remember. Um, but at the transfiguration, um, you remember it talks about the Messiah. It says, and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking. And I don't know why it calls him Elias here instead of Elijah, but it's referring to Elijah. And then when you look at Moses... When he went up to the Mount of God, it says, When he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when, so when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, amazingly the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. That is awesome. <laughs> like, could, I would love to be that close to our Father, that when you walk around people, that you're just glowing. I mean, that is, that is a... Something I don't want to be envious, but I really do. That would be an awesome closeness to have. And you guys are lights, like the Messiah told us. You know, we let your light shine. Don't hide it. Let it shine. Let people see the Father's love, just like the Messiah did when he was sh walking this world. And in the transfiguration, it says his face shone, just like Moses did uh, when he was walking down the mount after seeing the Father. So to me, that is that is really cool. That. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> That's some mind-blowing, really cool things. And a bright cloud here again is that quote. When you see him talking, the Father, it says, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And of course, when you look back at Exodus, the Father's always, there's always this cloud, especially on the mountain when he, you know, people, they weren't supposed to peek through the cloud to see him uh, because it would just be too much for them. They wouldn't be able to take it. And so it says, a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Where this is really cool, 
not just that it's the second time he's talking and he's and he spoken and he said the same thing. It's also the meaning of those names because I'm finding out, I believe the name James, if I'm not, I could be wrong. I haven't done a lot of research onto this was a replacement for Jacob because King James, you know, the King James version, he wanted to put his name in there. I've heard that. I'm not saying it's true. Um, so I put James or Jacob because <clears throat> they literally mean the same thing. When you look up, what does James mean? In Hebrew, and what does Jacob mean? And so the words themselves almost tell you exactly that quote. Listen or hearing the rock, my gift, Yahuwah gracious, Yahuwah delivers or saves his people, and he is my God to draw out, like that name Moses, to draw out. That's just the people's names that were there. And it almost tells you the exact same quote that he was telling you. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And you have that reference to the rock again. Really cool. And then we're kind of getting close to the end. I don't want to wear you guys out with all these connections. I know there's far more. You guys have probably made them. I'll have to go back and look and see. I think, yeah, yes. I said, yes, uh, James is Jacob. That's good to know. Awesome. Incarnate says, actually, Yaakov. Okay. Yeah, the pronunciations of names. I am not a name expert. I know there's name debates going on and people get mad when you say certain things. So. If that's where you draw the line. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, we're all new to this. I mean, not all. Some of us are newer than others. I'm new to this, uh, and I'm not a Hebrew expert or a Greek expert. So uh, thank you for your patience as we make our our uh, many mistakes, butchering names, saying the wrong names that some of you don't like. So uh, thank you for that. Now this is where it gets interesting. I have not yet figured this one out as much, but I do remember. You know, everybody's familiar with John 3, 16. But right before that, the Messiah says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So that was John 3, 14 and 15. And so you go back and you look at that. What is this talking about? Lifting up a serpent, you know, because we know with the rod, when he first laid it, when the Father told him to lay it down, it became a serpent. It scared Moses. He jumped back, you know, and the father's like, no, take this, take it up. You know, it'll become a rod in your staff again. So he picked it up, obeyed the father in spite of obviously being scared of snakes. Something a lot of people would have problems doing if he was like, hey, pick up that snake. It's <laughs> you really have to have trust to do that. And so that's what Moses did. But there was a time um, the, the reference he was talking about when the people that had been set free were speaking against the Father, directly against him and directly against Moses, you know, basically saying they left us here to die. I'd have to go back. I don't want to misquote them. But they were speaking against the Father. And so serpents were sent and people were dying. These serpents were sent into the people. They were dying. And the, I guess the shortened version of the story, the Father tells Moses, let me see if I have the verse pulled up um, right here. Oh, it is right here. Um, he says, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. And so that's what happened. People started, they would look at it, they would live. Didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. And so um, they looked at it. Let's see, here we go. I have a longer version of the verse. Um, let me see. And the people spake against God. Here it is. Yeah. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? So they were speaking against the Father. That's something you're not supposed to do. <laughs> if you don't know, don't do that. He has your best interest at heart. And so basically giving up on him, that's heartbreaking. Don't do that. And so um, that's where the serpents were sent. Fiery serpents. I have no clue what species of serpent that is and what that really means. I've looked that up today and can't remember uh, what the experts are telling us, but um, that goes back to where I guess there's the original original connection with the serpent. Um, let's see. Sorry, my notes were all over the place. I'm kind of trying to see where I'm at here. So it says, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we, we have sinned. So they're acknowledging their sin for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And so that's where Moses prayed for the people. He was a um, mediator, sort of. He would go to the Father on the people's behalf. Kind of sounds familiar to some of you. 
And that is where the fiery serpent came in. And that is where the reference that the Messiah said, just like that serpent was lifted up, so will the Son of Man. And so you have <clears throat> those connections. Also later on with Paul, there was a serpent thing that happened where um, he says, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. This doesn't mean, I want to verify or clarify, this does not mean to go and pick up snakes. That's kind of like, you know, jumping off of a cliff and saying, don't worry, my father will save me. Um, you don't want to do that. Don't make that your religion. But you see later on when Paul was bitten by a viper and it wasn't something he wasn't snake handling or anything like that. It came out of some brush when he was making a fire. I think that's what the story was. And um, the snake bit him and people thought he was going to die. But the Holy Spirit protects you when you're doing the Father's will. And so he didn't die. Moral of that story. He was trusting the Father there. And this is the one of the last connections with the serpent. And when you look when you when you talk about a brass serpent, like why brass? And I don't know. <laughs> but the uh the uh revelation version of the Messiah, when it talks about him, it says, Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. So that just Sort of a small little connection there. I'm sure there's more to this, and you guys are probably like, yes, of course there is. We all know there is. Um, this stuff is is really cool, and I know it's it's tied together, but again, I'm, I'm new to a lot of this stuff and these connections, and so you guys are here, hopefully, to help us out. And uh, one thing that I came across recently, thanks to social media, as much harm as it does, sometimes you find something cool, is that there is an article someone shared about the blood of a lamb. This is something I didn't know. You always hear about the blood of the lamb and it talks about sheep's blood. I'm going to read a little clip from this. It says the clue to the revolution is in the fields of a 250 acre farm near Carmarthen, if I'm saying that right, where 2000 sheep gaze. And this article is talking about antivenom. It says in preparation for a monthly donation of blood, their blood bears what is claimed to be the purest antidote to the world's deadliest snakes? Imagine that. <laughs> Blood of a lamb saving people from snake bites. How awesome is that? I didn't know that. That's that's new to me. So uh, some of you may be like, yeah, I live on a farm. We knew that. I had no clue. Really cool connection. And so you've even got verses where it says here, this is Revelation again. They defeated him because of the Lamb's blood and because of the message of their witness. Even when facing death, they did not cling to life. That's really cool. So even when you're facing that persecution, not looking back, turning to the world like, well, if I just deny the Father, everything will be good. If I sacrifice to their gods, I'll live. That's things that people have been dying for for a long time. And so, yeah, really cool connections. And it's worth dying for. The Father is worth dying for. He sent us his son as an example who, for whatever reason, didn't deserve it, went through with something that I could never go through. And I just, it's something that's continued to bless and bring people to the Father, just like Elijah did, just like Moses tried to do. And no one was perfect until the Father sent us his precious gift, his beloved son. So, really cool. And now that's kind of the conclusion of all of the slides that I had. I'm sure there's more and you guys can make a lot more connections. But the really cool thing and the important thing is, is that his mercy endures forever. Some of you are probably in situations where you just feel like I'm not worthy to talk to the father. He doesn't want to hear from me or I've done this or I've done that. I've been in those situations and even, you know, even recent times that happens because nobody's perfect. But the awesome thing about the father that I found out when he healed me, it wasn't at a time where I was this righteous person following his rules and guidelines perfectly. It was like the prodigal son. I went off into the world. I tried to put the world first for my happiness, not knowing that's what I was doing and immoral and having all these things that keep you from the father. Cause you think again, that lie, he doesn't want time with you. And yet again, we look back to the word and it tells us his mercy is enduring forever especially to those that are turning back to him with all their heart. Just turn back to him, and he's waiting for you. That's the really awesome and beautiful thing about his love. And so some of you here, if you're experiencing that distance and that condemnation cycle, 
that's why he sent his son to set you free from that and to not not because we're anything special not because i'm anything special but he literally sent us a, the best example to live by and so hopefully you will get to experience that because it does it sets you free just like it says it does it's nothing that we could do on our own so that is it i know you guys are probably exhausted from all those rapid connections <laughs> but uh Hopefully we will get to add to this some more someday. I want to do more interconnected word uh, series and see if they can bless you guys like they have me. I know I've, I just love the connections. I have a bunch of different presentations going on at the same time. I find stuff and I put it in one slide. I've been wanting to do um, more of the lives because the editing videos and stuff, I just haven't had a whole lot of time to do that. Been really busy. I'm about to finish up my school year. For those of you who don't know, we teach, uh, my brother and I both um, teach, and I teach science, ironically, uh, get labeled a science denier, but um, teaching science, and it's been a blessing to teach it in a way that is guided by truth without getting fired. It's important that you don't get fired, but do things, be creative. We need more of you truth seekers out there uh, fighting for these children. It is a battlefield. They are going after the children, the precious ones, the little ones. And so um, take care of them. And if you don't see me for a few weeks and, it, and you have, I'll, I'll probably give you guys updates, but um, my wife is expecting, and I don't know how many times I've said that or if I've not, uh, noted that very often. She's about 36 weeks along. Could be any day now. This is a, an, an unexpected miracle. Child number five. And uh, our love story is really cool. I, I think I shared a little bit of it at our meetup to the people that were there. Really cool. I want to share more of our testimony because some of you guys have asked, like, what is your story? If we're going to be studying the word with you, where do you come from? What denomination are you? What you know, you have all these questions. And um, to answer the denomination question, I've never been a part of a denomination. I get called Jehovah's Witness. I've been called a lot of different things. Um, but I am definitely not associated with any denominations. I found the father bef without I wasn't brought up in a church environment. So all of the information I've learned has uh, been from the father and my dad, people I fellowship with, um, praying, seeking on my own. And I think my dad was one of the first. Of course, our mom prayed and she was spiritual, but my dad got saved when I was like 11. He started just rapidly teaching me things and it was too much at the time. But now I see, wow, he knew a lot early on, way back when, back in the 90s. <laughs> the 1900s <laughs> as some of our kids say they're like you were alive in the 1900s yeah so uh you guys are awesome i want if you have any questions anything you want to share prayer request i want to leave it open for you guys to do that i know um i forget to do that sometimes we had our last meetup and i wanted to do that and i totally forgot um oh somebody said what you discovered about the map thanks for the reminder carl um yeah, you shared something with me about a map. That was really cool. And this is Carl. He he used to, he worked at NASA. He was a contractor at NASA. He came to our meetup. Had some cool things, but so many people sharing. We didn't get time to have him share to everybody. But um, yeah, he shared a really cool map. And then also, I have a map video. It was one of the last ones I, I worked on it a couple years ago. I had a man from Italy tra help translate that old map from the 1500s to, from the Rumsfeld collection. What's the map called? Uh I can't remember the name of the map, but it's from like the 1500s, and it's like a ac pretty accurate world map, flat world map, and um, it has Italian stuff. And I was interested in what it said by the North Pole because they were documenting all the different creatures and things on their journey. So some cool stuff. But again, this was like two years ago, and it was around the time my mom was about to pass away. She was going through her, her final days, and so I was really under a lot. And I didn't get to put it out, and it was like low quality because I had horrible internet. But you can hear the guy, the guy that was translating. You can hear him well, so I need to put that into the video as well. It's saved on my old computer. I just need to get that, upload it. And again, it'll be low quality, but for educational purposes. All right, I'm a believer. So I'm, I'm reading your comments now, now that we're finally done here. We got Tara. I didn't get to hear Carl speak. Maybe next time, yeah. We'll have another meetup. Hopefully, um, hopefully soon. It may be a few months because, again, my wife is pretty far along and I don't know what my schedule will be like. It could change in a moment's notice. Try to stay close to home for that reason. Father in heaven. 
Yep. What's, yep. Sorry. I'm reading these. Reading your comments. You guys are awesome. I've enjoyed you guys hanging out with us, sharing everything you do. I got to meet Joy. I got to meet Joy in person with her husband, Jesus, or Jesus and Joy, they call themselves. <laughs> Perfect together. That was awesome. It's such a blessing. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to even sit down and share images, and I forgot to take a group photo. I don't know what it is about these things. I get so distracted with all the awesome people. I forget to do things. I even have it on like on this on the screen projected like group photo after we eat and somehow somehow drop the ball there. All right. So no questions. If there's no questions, I'll be getting off here soon. I just wanted to share all those connections. Somebody said, Josh, I got a flag. Got to flag you down soon. I feel very led that our next interaction will be very good. Yeah, I met him. This is uh, Aaron from the first meetup. Or the first big meetup we had it was our actually our third. Was it our third? Maybe it was our third meetup total, but it was our first ever big uh, multi-day meetup with camping, saving the day, incarnate unlimited. So, the rock star. So yeah, I appreciate it, man. We could definitely get together very soon. All right. Any closing questions, remarks, anything, prayer request? You guys are awesome. I, I like to hang out with you guys. You guys. Really set me at peace. I am not a, a people. Per, I'm not a really big um, public speaker. I don't like getting in front of people. It feels a little safer that I can't see you guys except for in the comments. <laughs> it feels like I'm a little more brave here, but the Father puts me at peace, and you guys, your prayers and everything really helps. Are you familiar with the praying medic? Yes, I think he's on. Is it? He's on one of those other platforms. I think if that's who I'm thinking about, I think. I'm not sure. Somebody said that joy is nice meeting at the meetup. Jamie, there's Jamie. Jamie was also there. So many awesome people. My family is uniting. So yeah, um, definitely some cool connections. And I apologize if I went through them really fast. I do that when I get excited. And so um, when you see my videos, like that was a 40 minute, or about I guess about 40 something minutes. I would edit that and edit out all my mistakes and make it sound like I'm well spoken. So when you guys see some of our teachings, you're like, wow, he's very smart. He speaks really well. No, I've deleted <laughs> probably 30 minutes worth of ums and and uh, misspeak, my misspeaking moments like I probably did. Not perfect. Again, like I said, if there's anything I say, don't just believe it because I'm saying it or because someone else is saying it. Pray for the Father to guide you. I know we put out some controversial stuff at times and don't let it don't let it um, cause you to have a lot of anger. Pray first. I've had those experiences where someone has brought information to me, even my wife, where I get angry. And I'll be like, I'm going to pray for you because I'm angry. I'm going to go away and you'll learn the truth. And then I go away and I, I calm down and I pray. And the next thing you know, I'm seeing that she was right. <laughs> Not saying that I'm right. I'm just saying you never know. If there's that, a lot of that anger and you're wanting to persecute somebody, just check and find out where that anger is coming from and uh, humble yourself like the greatest, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, those that humble themselves like a small child. As we said in our last video, somebody said, do you believe that the millennial reign has passed? I do not. I do not. I've seen some good evidence from people that were like preterists who said it did. Um, but I personally do not believe that it has. This says I don't have a nerve to you. Yes. All right. Thanks, Caleb. Oh, yeah, it's definitely not me. I'm terrified, um, especially when we started, like when I first started doing videos and there was like a couple hundred subscribers, I would just do videos and I would just do it all in one cut. Wouldn't even try. It was low quality. And then the father opened the floodgates and I started getting nervous and I had to pray, like, just help us help us stay calm no matter what happens. And he's he's blessed us by answering that prayer. People come in this direction. Some of you are like, I've only been here for a few weeks. If you're new, you're an answered a continued answer to a prayer we had back um, when we were about a year or so into this waking up. And I just said, Father, you're showing us the truth about the firmament, about creation. I ask that you send people this way so that we can show them your truth and that, you know, give you glory. And the next day, the next day, I'm not kidding. I get home from work. I'm, I'm kind of drained and I check my emails and I had thousands of new subscribers and it just kind of flooded in until the um, censorship, then it stopped. And then 
it was like a little drought, and then the father just did his thing, opened the floodgates again, proving that he can answer prayers no matter where you're at, no matter, um, even though we're using the enemy's platform, he's allowed us to use this to bring people closer to him and carry on that mission. It's not easy, and the spiritual attacks are real. I do want to ask you guys, I, I said prayer request, pray for my twin brother, one of the other brothers of the Founded Earth Brothers. Uh, pray for him. Going through a tough time. Not going to give details. He's uh, just needing your prayers. And uh, my dad is here. My dad is in the house. What's up, Papa? <laughs> it's the one I was talking about earlier. He's uh, the one that first introduced me to a lot of the stuff just rapidly with um, how to pray, how to understand the word, how to rightly divide it, and was a truther back then. This is the early 90s, and he was he was on, on seeing things that people didn't see for, you know, a lot of people weren't seeing in large numbers until recently. And so blessed to have him as my earthly dad, earthly father. And um, he's been like a right-hand man to me. When we have meetups, he's always there to help, except for this last one. And I will never forgive him. No, I'm just kidding. This last one, um, he was busy. He's needed. He's got grandchildren now, even though he's young and immature like the rest of us. He's got grandchildren. I have grandchildren too. Carl says, Bill is great. Yeah, Carl got to meet my dad. Terry says, hey, Bill. My dad's a celebrity. He's a local celebrity. <laughs> he used to work on the F-16s back in when I was like a young kid. He was in, in the Air Force. And so he would work on the F-16s and tell us how they worked. And it's so cool now. I wish I knew back then what I know now about these things so we could have got the pilots understanding that the world is um, stationary, not curving. And uh, got my brother here, Grace and Truth Fellowship. If you have not checked out his channel, he hadn't put out a video in a while. Get on him about that. He needs to get back to work. Um, <laughs> that's my twin bro, my clone. If they want to come on, I can join him on. He's. Uh, I'm hoping. Hopefully, he can get a studio set up. He's in the process of moving. If he can get a studio set up, he can join in anytime. Somebody said, "Is that?" missionary can coffee cookies from the prisons <laughs> yeah my dad was working in the prisons how did you know my dad worked in the prisons you, to, you must have been there um yeah my dad I, I tell people he just got out of prison you know not that long ago because he used to work in prison so uh gets him some street cred right there <laughs> dad says hi carl got the family here um I've watched you guys for years. You missed us, Nancy. Darn. I should have put up, I should have uh, advertised sooner. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sometimes at short notice, I put these things up. Usually you'll get about a 24 hour notice. And sometimes YouTube does not give you the notifications. Make sure you hit the bell over and over and over. And as some people have said, they've done that. It still doesn't work. And they come back just to look, see what we're doing, that we're still here. And miraculously, we are still here. All right. Are you aware that some of your wrenches is deleting com? Some of, uh oh, are some of the comments getting deleted? I do have some people that help me delete things that are spam. So if there's some that need to be deleted, let me know. Hidden sometimes feeling involved as well. All right. Well, I don't want to leave. I feel like we just got here. It's not even been an hour yet. We're about 30 seconds away from the hour mark. So um, I can cut this off after later. Not to not make the video scare people away with being one hour long, but um, I feel like I never get to see you guys and and uh, do these things. So I want to do this more. Getting more comfortable makes it easier to do. Sometimes it's scary to put stuff out there. I feel like I have to be prepared. I'm going through. Thankfully, thanks to answered prayers and you guys, a study phase where I just want to study all the time, which is something that is not. It's not in my character. I'm not a studious person, and so. Um, it's been a blessing. I feel like I just keep uh, the father's just showing me stuff and I'm kind of going through this phase where I want to understand the entire Bible, not just the end of it and the beginning of it. Like I have my entire life. I want to understand all of it and seeing these connections makes it more interesting, makes it more fun. So you see things uh, that you've never seen right now. I'm studying the seed of Jacob because there's a significance there that I'm finding uh, within my own life. That is a story all in itself. Another testimony that I want to share. Um, Fallen World Films is here. Thanks for sharing the faithful and continuing. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all your 
much needed, much needed prayers in the spiritual warfare. You guys are a major blessing. And again, thank you to all of our people that have supported us. You guys that came out to the meetup and helped us pay for it. <laughs> My wife allows, <laughs> allows this stuff to happen because before she was like, there's no way we can do this. And once she saw how awesome you guys were, it's, we've always um, ended up in the positives after these things. So that's been been a huge, huge blessing. Willard Water be well worth looking up. Sorry, I'm reading comments too. All right, so no more questions. Any more final, final prayer requests? I'm seeing that it's getting late. Some of you guys probably have to go to bed. I know. I probably need to go soon. It takes me a while to wind down after we've got to hang out with you guys. Not seeing any questions. Working on the lunar calendar, making sure I get the correct Sabbath times. Yeah, that is that is something that is tough for a lot of people. I think um, hanging on his words, put out a video. I still haven't got to really break it down about the dates. Everybody's looking at the dates. And I believe that's why the word says don't judge someone based on their Sabbaths, because they were debating it back then, I'm sure. I'm sure this is nothing new. A lot of the things we're debating now were being debated 2,000 years ago. Nothing new under the sun. All right, let's see. Can you start from the beginning? I'll start over. Yes, yeah, so start. <laughs> we'll start over. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry you missed us. Um, yeah, I would uh, love to start over and do it better now that I'm calmed down. I get excited and I go really fast. Uh, trying to get better at not not getting, not uh, not going so fast and not just blowing through things. I'm, it's hard not to do that, especially when you're passionate about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't get irritated. I'm always stopping too. <laughs> Adding notes, little things to it. And um, it's always nice to have someone there, especially especially to um, help you when you ask questions. My wife, I'm always asking her questions. What do you know about this? What do you know about that? She's like, just read it for yourself. <laughs> I'm like, come on, just rapidly feed me this stuff. Uh, time's running out. <laughs> All right, so someone says here, Caleb, Pray for a friend of mine who wants to serve y'all, but does not know how exactly things work compared to her former way of thinking. Yeah, that's a hard one coming out of our, our preconceived notions. I know when I first woke up, I was like, what do I do now? You're showing us all these things. What do we do? <laughs> do I start a church? And and I've just started seeing things clearly. You know how, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in this one mode of we go to this one building and we just have one person speaking and everyone else listening and it's kind of stationary. and the father was guiding me in a different direction. And thankfully we went this way and wherever else he leads, you need to go. If he tells you to go to a store and talk to somebody on this aisle, <laughs> aisle three, <laughs> you want to go there and just be led of the spirit, not doing things overzealously on your own. You might do things the wrong way. It's about our father's will. And like the Messiah said, he only did the things he saw his father doing when he was raising people from the dead through his father power, his father's power. He wasn't undoing the father's work. And so you have a lot of people now, of course, teaching that when somebody dies, it was his will, when in fact, death is the enemy. Except for the times when it's to spare somebody from something that would have been far worse. So the Father knows his wisdom is far greater than ours. Always understand that, trust that. Somebody said, do you believe we are in the last time? Sorry, the question just disappeared. I lost it. Here's a question. Do you believe we are in the last times where the enemy is released to deceive the nations? And do you think we're seeing that now with all the deceptions in this world? I believe, I mean, I've, I don't, I know, like, like my dad says, this is the father's, only the father knows. Um, the Messiah himself said that only the father knows when the end is. He didn't even know. And I am nowhere near him. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know. However, this does seem, it does seem like you've noticed a shift where the enemy was hiding, seemingly, it seemed like. I mean, we could kind of see it when we were waking up, and all of a sudden there's no more hiding. All of the Satanism and all of the symbology, it's all just wide open out there. The agendas with the different things with gender, being on kids' shows. I mean, it's, it's just wide open out there, and no one seems to really be doing anything. There's no uproars. It's almost like there's this, okay, now we can do what we want. Our time is really running out. Let's just go through everything we can. And um, 
I think it, a lot of it dates back to what we were looking at at the very beginning of this video, the connections with Egypt. When people were being set free out of Egypt, um, and or I guess before that, before when Moses was being born, why were they killing people? That's what somebody in the comments asked me in my video when I got it wrong. They said, look at, look at why they were killing people. Why were they killing people uh, in Egypt back then before Moses was being born? Why were the newborns, or they were supposed to kill them, and the women that were supposed to do it didn't do it. Um, and so why were they doing that? It was about population control because the father's people were overpopulating and they were getting nervous. Like, okay, look, here's all these people overpopulating. So what, like, we've got to take care of this. And so they were trying to control the population. And now father's people are being called out of Egypt again. And here they are trying to do things with the population it's because that word is still alive. It's still valid. We are being called out of Babylon and out of Egypt. And here they are trying their best to do the same things they did back then. The smiting of infants in the womb that you read about in Enoch that was talked about and or uh, was told that it was taught to mankind by the fallen is now a legal practice that people do all the time. It's called abortion now. And so... All of these things, all of these reasons of population control, it, it's all related. They know we're waking up, and they know that the truth is powerful. That's why they control the internet. They shut off the truth about creation. I could have not imagined how many people would be awake right now if they didn't do the things they did to sort of turn off the water hose. Everybody was waking up. It was pretty fast. And so they've done that in many ways, burning books, burning scrolls, burning people, and we're seeing that again. So just know that the persecution is something we should take joy in, and it's hard to say that, especially when you're being persecuted, but man, that's just think, man, this is great. This person just said they hope that I die. <laughs> this is awesome. I must be doing something. I must be doing something right. So um, so stay blessed. Like it's, like he says, let your light shine. Don't hide it. It's not like you're going to light a candle and put it behind a bushel. want to let that light shine. Some of you guys don't realize um how much of an influence you can have on just one person almost every single day when you go out into the world. You're the representation of our Father's light to the world. And I have to remind myself that I sometimes get overwhelmed and I just feel like go in, do my task, get the groceries or whatever it is and go home. And it's it would just really change the lives of those people around you if you're walking with the Father like the Messiah did. You think when you talk to Him, it changes your life. When you walk with Him, it's going to change the lives of others. It's very, very powerful, very true. And so just live by that example that his Messiah gave us, his beloved son. And things will really, you, you'll just be blown away by the blessing. And so uh, thank you guys. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for the super sticker. You guys are awesome. Uh, again, the support is humbling, humbling. It's hard to not be humble with you great soldiers on our team. And like, like the person said, do you think it's the last times that we're close? I feel, I think we could feel there was a spiritual shift and that's why so many of you are as vigilant as you are doing the things you're doing, being attacked. I heard somebody early on saying they were being attacked spiritually and things were bad. Pray for these people, pray for our fellow brothers and sisters, people being called out of Egypt. Yes, you're going to be attacked um, as part of it. I think they try to, the, the uh, mega church preachers try to make it look like, yeah, all you got to do is just donate some money and say a few things and come here a few times and everything's going to be great. Better roses. No, <laughs> it's going to be great. You're going to have a, a void in your life filled like you've never experienced before. The things of this world cannot fill it up. People like me, and I've tried everything I can. There's no amount of drugs, alcohol, or physical pleasure that could ever take away that void. Only the father could. And when my heart was broken at its almost at its worst at the time, I thought that was the worst heartbreak I would have. Um, I was wrong. But the um, leaning on the world incident where I leaned on the world and on a person and on a job and had the father on the back burner. When he healed me, when I reached out to him and said those last three words, someone asked, what was your testimony? What did what happened? How did you get healed? Well, I just know that I wanted to die and the pain was that bad. I was like, I just want to end my life. If this pain doesn't go away, and again, I look, I want to share this, my whole testimony eventually again, because the first time I shared it was low quality and rushed, but the, um, but that, that miracle that happened to me that day is 
was not a time where I deserved it. It wasn't like I was living righteously and wanting and deserving anything. The father, literally, when I reached out to him and said, I know you wouldn't put more on me than I can handle, but I'm at my limit. And this pain is so great. I don't want to live if I have this pain. I said, I trust you. And when I said, I trust you, that's when the miracle happened. Like lightning. If you've ever experienced his healing power, it's not a slow, sort of warm, fuzzy feeling all the time. It, it was powerful. I, I really felt like I got struck with a lightning bolt made out of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way I can describe it. And that joy unspeakable, him showing me why I was hurt. All the questions you have, because he hears your cries when you're saying, why am I hurting? Why do I feel this way? He's listening and he loves you and he wants to answer you. He wants to give you the answers. And so he did. He showed me why I hurt. And it and it wasn't what I thought. I thought he was over here punishing me, this wrathful being that just was punishing me because of what I did. And in reality, the world was punishing me. The enemy that's going around like a lion trying to kill you wanted me to end my life, putting those thoughts in my head. And so the father restored my heart beyond new. He didn't just make it to way, the way it was before. It was beyond new. I wasn't even sad. The next day, I didn't want to go out and drink. I, you know, here I am after a breakup. An engagement was broken off a month before the wedding. I just lost a job. Like all of these things happened. Here comes my father, the one that I had put on the back burner. When I reached out to him, reaching back down to me like a good father, what would a good father do, you know, when you're hurt? What would, you know, if your parents, you know, your mom or dad tell you to look both ways, you get ran over because you didn't look both ways. What is a loving parent going to do? Are they going to laugh at you? Are they going to be glad you got hurt? Or are they going to pick you right up? And that's what kind of father we serve. That's what kind of father I found out that I have. That's why I got interested in intelligent design. That's what led me to question evolution. And then eventually more miracles happened. And I started questioning everything and then creation. And before you know it, <laughs> the wisdom of this world is gone and you become a fool. And you're surrounded by people that have no clue that they have bought into a system that's a lie. That's designed to take glory away from our father. So that's a very brief summary. I'll, I'll, I want to share a longer version of our testimony. Thank you, KC, for your super sticker. Didn't even know what those were until recently. Super stickers. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, <clears throat> definitely want to share more of our story. It might be one of those things where we have to break it down in parts so it's not not overwhelming. Um, they had a prayer request here. And I can go to my parents who are very ill and live in Spain. My prayer, that is my prayer request. We'll be praying for you. Thank you guys for praying for them as well. They need to see their parents who are ill. Time with them is precious. And as some of you have experienced, once you lose a parent or both of them, there's no replacements for them. They cannot be replaced. Let them know how much they mean to you while they're here. You will have regrets if you don't. <laughs> Someone told me, get audio recordings of their voice. I wish I'd have heeded that call. It's tough going back to the, the voicemail, trying to find audio. But uh, remember their wisdom. Honor your father and your mother. Yes. There's my dad. Doesn't keep us from wanting the forbidden fruit. Yeah, that's those temptations are always going to be there. Says he sent us his son to turn us away from our iniquities. Give us that example when we're really reaching out for that fruit to go. What would the what would the beloved son do? <laughs> he would do his father's will. So yeah, it's a great gift given to be raised up. Just like the message that our our dad, the message video, our dad. If you want to see our message video, powerful stuff. A lot of stuff hidden in that message that was revealed to him back in like 2005. He wants to come on and do another another good show on that where we could do it justice in modern time. Modern times, modern days. So uh, another one. Thank you, Tara. Tara's awesome. Got to, like I said earlier, got to meet her at the meetup. One of our awesome supporters and her husband and family. Really, really cool people. The best. And what makes you guys the best is like the Messiah said, the Humble, the ones that are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven are humble, and that is all I see. So, thank you, Michael. We got Michael here, the archangel, just like my, my twin bro. He was here. He might have left. He's a busy guy putting the kids to sleep. I think my dad's going to, my dad's going to sleep. 
Good night. Good night, Papa. He's got work. He's a working man. Works hard. Works a lot harder than I do. Came out of retirement. Could have had the easy life. <laughs> All right. Well, no more prayer requests. No more questions. I'm going to cut this off so I can make sure my wife is okay. My daughter. See if she, how she's doing. She's one of my, my good friends. She loves to use me to play as her play toy. She's my boss. Bro, no. Our dad's not old. What are you talking about? Some some people here think they're old, and we have to have a new understanding of what old is. You know, Moses, back when, when his journey was starting, when he was setting people free, he was like 80. A lot of people in the Bible were starting to have kids when they were like 100. You guys are babies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my brother said, pray for my brother. <laughs> like he says... He he he's the older he's the older of us too. He says he was um he was he was uh he was planned. I wasn't. <laughs> You'll see when I get the birthright, I'll be like Jacob. He's Esau. <laughs> yeah, he was he was born first. Uh, seven minutes older. There's the seven. Yeah, I'm studying. I've, I've been studying the seed of Jacob and thinking about the twins. Reminds me of. Of us too. What would happen if I stole the blessing and then had to go into hiding? He's a little bigger than me. He's the All American. He's the All American wrestler in the Hall of Famer. So he's uh, he's nothing to be to not be feared. <laughs> be very afraid. He says he said when he was my age he needed prayer too. Yeah, he's seven minutes older and he'll say, "When you're my age, you'll understand." <laughs> yeah. The, the twin jokes are always there, yeah. And I, I tell people, I like to tell them, uh, we, we roast each other. It's fun. You should see. See our roasting battles. They go on pretty well. Um, but I, like I tell people, he's the reason cloning is illegal. <laughs> uh, thank you. Following Yahuwah and Yeshua. Thank you. Been a blessing hanging out with you guys. I want to do this way, way more often uh, just because of how blessed it makes me feel. I could feel the spirit moving and you guys, I could just sense the the prayer warriors uniting. It just, it makes you feel at peace. It's something um, you don't feel unless you're surrounded by people like you. And it really is, it's what keeps us here. It's what keeps us going along with the father and the things he does for us. Got a four-day weekend starting Thursday. Maybe I can work sometime for a powwow. That'd be awesome. If not in person, video video calls, any of that stuff works great. Ooh, my stomach is growling. Sorry if you heard that. That was loud. Must be getting hungry. All right. Yeah, my beard grows fast. Yeah, somebody saw me. I was clean shaved. It is a one of my rare superpowers is to grow a beard in a week. <laughs> Yeah, like, what happened? I don't know, but I have to shave before I start getting fleas. They grow, they come pretty quick out here in the cruncher. You have to be careful. The flea collars don't quite fit me. Does anybody else struggle knowing that? Okay, there's a question. Boom. Um, does anybody else here struggle knowing that their deceased loved one is in hell for eternity? I lost my mom recently and a friend. They were not saved. It is hard for me to accept. There's good news. <laughs> There's good news for you. This is a controversial study. I'm not going to get into the details, but the concept of hell. If you've ever read about hell, what does it talk about happens with hell? It gets cast into the lake of fire. Hell is another word for Sheol. Okay. There is a punishment. I don't want people to think when you start talking about hell not being what we're told that it is. There's just no punishment that people just die. You can just do as you want and live free and then you die and you just vanish and there's that's it. No, there is going to be a punishment, but death is eternal. The second death that we're trying to avoid is to perish, like it says in John 3, 16. Okay. And so there is Sheol. What people say hell, um, that word is often Sheol, Gehenna, the Valley of Hinnom. My brother has a good study on this. Lots of other people do. Um, I think uh, what's the, hanging on his words has some good videos on this. It has to do with the biblical earth model. Uh, when you go, that's why 
there's there's compartmentalization when people die. That's why there's when you hear those near death experiences, it doesn't mean they've already resurrected. And I think there, there's confusion. People think you die and you just go straight to heaven. There is a sort of holding place. You're about the voices from the grave crying out. There's what's known as Sheol. And the second death for those that will perish is ultimately their eternal punishment. They're not going to burn. Your grandma is not going to be burning literally forever and ever and ever and ever because she was a non-believer. That is not justice. The Father works on justice, and justice will be served. For some, it will be way less pleasant than others, but um, your grandmother you know, <clears throat> is not one of the fallen, not one of the eternal beings. The fallen, it does tell us, they will burn forever. And their offspring, because they were from eternal beings. And so you have those unclean spirits and the fallen, they will be tortured forever. However, the non-elect, the people, the non-believers, those who are in lawlessness, those will die the second death. I know that's controversial. I don't have time to go into all the verses. <laughs> um, maybe we'll cover that one day. I'll have some people on that are experts in that, like my brother and Ken Heinebrook from Hanging on His Words. He's really good. Um, Sean from Kingdom in Context, he's probably got some teachings on that. There was another one, Unlearn the Lies. A long time ago, I saw a real good video from him about that. But don't take my word for it. Go to the Word. Um, I see a lot of people sharing some of the same couple of verses that confuse a lot of people. Uh, it's worth praying about and studying. If you see somebody on the street corner, they're usually speaking, you'll burn in hell forever if you don't love God. And that doesn't bring people in because that does not seem... I mean, just imagine that on a dating website. Like... Um, I'll be the best husband if you don't love me and you divorce me, I'm going to burn you forever. Like, um, you wouldn't want to marry that person. And our father is a loving father. Yes, there is wrath. And like the Messiah was talking about that stone grinding up people. Um, it's not good for those that do perish. They are, they will perish and they will cease to exist. Death is an eternal punishment, not an eternal punishing for those who are non-believers. So hopefully that brought you some clarity. I don't know if that did. Um, God is warning you, whatever your your actual name is. Um, that was just my two cents there. So hopefully it brought you some a little bit of clarity and, and less sadness for your loved ones. As I know, that is something uh, my mom right before she passed was like, I just the uncertainty of what happens right after you go. A lot of people don't know. And understanding what happens next is important. What we're preparing for. That's important. So we'll hopefully dive into that soon, uh, Father willing, and start going over some of these things. And like I said, I'm, I'm in the middle of studying. So thank you for your patience as I study. I don't want to do videos just for the sake of doing videos. I want to study first, see some things, and then go over it with you guys. This is like a Bible study. It's not me teaching you. It's us working together, studying the Word. So uh, understand that. Again, I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm a young student student just like you guys are an old student compared to some of you it depends on how old you are <laughs> so uh i love you guys the father loves you i will go ahead if i don't see any more questions I'll let you guys get some rest you guys are awesome i will uh see you around very soon take care stay safe and stay ready